Now this article made me mad as shit. As you see what it said, you know what I mean? How the hell can you even sit there and say that it's Lil Wayne albums that you can skip? How? You know, that shit really the fuck threw me off for a minute. And at first I just seen the headline and I was like, all right, let me go see what the article talking about. You know, Double XL, of course, that magazine, y'all know the dumb shit they be on. But it basically says Lil Wayne albums worth, worth listening to and those you need to skip. And so it goes on and says the first album worth listening to is The Block Is Hot, which is his debut album, which is incredible. You know what I mean? I remember that album dropping and, you know, high school days, or whatever the case may be. But still the uh leading single to block is hot was crazy wayne was just crazy on everybody records that's back when you had bg the juvenile hot boys big timers anything wayne was on his verse was crazy especially if you look at 400 degrees and a g code his verses always stood out so we was anticipating an album from wayne and it didn't disappoint to me that's a classic album you know what i mean it ain't that many debut albums from artists for people really have a strong body of work and for his age bracket and that's back when he didn't want to be, he, he didn't want to be in the same boat as like the Littles, like Little Zane, Little Bow Wow, Little Sammy, you know what I'm saying? So his content, if you remember the um, the Hardball soundtrack, he basically did an interview, you know, talking about that. Like, don't really put me in that boat because like, I guess a kitty rapper, he didn't want to be, you know, considered that. And so when it came to The Block Is Hot, I think he definitely stepped out of that box and showed people that, yo, you're not going to box me in with all these little rappers. And that's crazy because even back then when he was young, compared to the Littles, and then you look at the Littles now, you know what I mean? So Littles have always been around. But yeah, I definitely say The Block Is Hot is worth listening to. I mean, that just used to jam, like slap hella hard, like certain moments. Keisha was always a favorite. I still don't know why they didn't do a fucking uh, video for that joint, you know what I mean? But he did the video for uh, The Block Is Hot, Respect Us, Loud Pipes, you know, and that shit was dope as hell for an album. So we was definitely waiting for the follow-up, which was the sophomore Lights Out, but they didn't have that album in there. But moving on, man, I, I agree. Worth listening to Block Is Hot, definitely. So now we get into I Am Not A Human Being 2, and they put Skip on there. I'm like, okay, that wasn't a real strong album, no, we're not going to argue that fact. But you can't say it's not moments on there. You can't completely skip any Wayne album. Sorry, motherfuckers keep texting my phone. My bad, y'all. But in my opinion, you can't skip no Wayne album. Because if you look at the generation now, that he was heavy influenced by Lil Wayne. Now, it's not the strongest album from Wayne. I'll give you that. I definitely think he dropped the ball on the intro record. That beat with that piano was crazy. You know what I mean? Some of the features were sketchy, but he definitely got joints on there. The 2 Chains record is dope. Um, I still like the intro, though. I think that's pretty cool. Um, what um, What's the other joint off the mixtape? No Worries is pretty cool. Um, what's the other one? God Bless America is pretty dope. So it's just like, I won't say it's an album you got to skip. It's just that Tez and whoever else was putting together Wayne albums for all the songs he had, they don't know how to construct the album because this album definitely had potential to be dope. And for those who don't know, Kanye did, you know, the album cover, which is pretty dope if you understand the metaphor behind it and all that. The whole I'm not a human being and aliens and it's pretty dope. So if he definitely do a part three, he definitely needs to deep dive and understand and go back to the era that got him to where he was with this project because I expect I'm not a human being Wayne to have the most craziest zaniest beats to where it's like oh shit nobody can rap on this but Wayne can get on it and just destroy it that's what another thing about Wayne that was so appealing so I don't really agree with that then they got of course the Carter worth listening to that's that's a no-brainer I mean coming from 500 degrees which they also had on the list we didn't know where he was going to go as far as his career and far as like what direction he was going to go in you know, with his music, in a sense, you know, Manny Fresh still did his thing, evolved the sound of Lil Wayne, but it was getting to the point where Wayne was starting to rap on other people's beats, and that's kind of what we wanted, so I agree, the Carter was definitely worth listening to, then he got 500 degrees skip, not his strongest body of work, I will agree, but at the end of the day, it's too many joints on there, for at least my generation, to where it's not the best notable album for Wayne, but you got to realize the situation where it was just basically him on the label, nobody else was there. And, you know, the production is, is kind of lackluster. 
but I feel like this was Wayne definitely evolving out of that whole era of writing down lyrics, I guess, in a sense. And you can tell when you listen to this, you know what I mean? With some of the songs people really probably wouldn't vibe with now, but he definitely got some joints on there that's crazy. I know I can, like, at least go back through the album. There's some joints on there that I definitely fuck with. Really, you could listen to the whole album. I don't understand why they would say skip, but 500 Degrees was solid to me. Now we got the Carter 2. Duh, it's worth listening to. Like, why else will we not put that on any list? You know what I mean? Because he stepped it up so far past what we had expectations for because the Carter was already crazy. It's like, damn, we never heard Wayne rap like this. But then you get the whole Carter 2 situation. But I feel like in those two albums, what kind of fucked it up the whole Gilly situation. You know what I mean? And to me, I never believed that he wrote anything for Wayne. Did he properly show Wayne a certain cadence and a certain flow, I feel like more or less on Carter 1 than Carter 2. Because you, you definitely can hear that sort of Philly type slang or whatever the case may be. Who the fuck is this? Like, damn, wait until motherfucker reply. But on the Carter 2, it's just too many joints to where it's just like, nah, niggas ain't writing for Wayne. Niggas ain't doing shit for Wayne. Wayne just at his best doing what he doing and the mixtape showed that so i definitely feel like this is the album worth listening to no doubt now we get into rebirth this shit made me laugh so hard it's just like okay they put the carter five on here and say that's worth listening to but this is a skip rebirth is a skip and 500 degrees is a skip how can rebirth be a skip when most of these new niggas is starting to try rock music now you know, all these mumble rappers was talking about they rock stars, especially Uzi or whatever the case may be. So that makes no sense to say this is an album that's a skip, which it ain't because it's fire on this album. You know what I mean? From Prom Queen to um, the joint with Eminem to the joint She's on Fire, uh, the joint with Nicki, the joint with Chanel. It's just too many joints on here to be like, oh, this is a skip. I fuck with Wayne with the rock shit. I thought that was a good era. I don't know why he didn't follow it up again with a sequel. But I definitely feel like if you're a Wayne fan and you know the mixtapes, when he was already trying that rock sound, it's plenty of songs that we can name if we go search for him to find out that when he was doing this rock album, we was anticipating because he kind of mashed that shit together and made that shit work for him. He didn't go over there and try to do what they did. He took what they do and what he do and mix it together and it came out with a solid album. And niggas forget, gold album mean classic. 500,000 sold mean classic. You go back in the 90s and check all those albums, even the 2000s. Benny Siegel was a steady gold artist, classic albums. But I guess the word classic will get will be the topic of discussion because you'll say Benny Siegel and Lil Wayne is just like, okay, between both gold albums, which is a classic and which ain't. You can have that debate with yourself. But you ain't skipping no fucking rebirth. And if and actually I think I'm gonna pit in this video, it was a thread. I don't always be on Twitter and look at threads, but this article in the comment section had a thread that where it was just like a chick made a point and then the guy rebuttaled it. They're both right, but it's total bullshit. You know, her comment was basically saying that he has a abundance of music and a great catalog for you to ever have to listen to Rebirth. And I think that's the most stupidest shit I ever heard in my life. You can't skip this. This is a part of his career. Rebirth is a part of his evolution. You know what I'm saying? Because if Wayne didn't take the chance to do something like this, I mean, after Kanye did 808s and Heartbreak, you sort of see Wayne dip off and do this. And then you look at the new generation of what they're doing. So I don't believe that she made any sense saying that you can't skip this fucking album. You can choose to do it but that's dumb because that's a part of his legacy. You know what I mean? So I thought that was bogus as hell. Of course, the Carter Three. We don't have to talk about that. They put it on the list worth listening to. No shit. You know what I mean? As soon as I seen that, it's like, okay, who really wrote this? Like they didn't put no thought into it. You know what I mean? Because in my opinion, you can't skip no Wayne album. Now you can throw Eminem, Jay Z in there, even Kanye. Does those three have a couple of joints you probably could skip? Sure. You can't skip any Wayne projects because it it, it is who he is. You know what I mean? But yeah, Card 3 is a classic. We ain't got to talk about that. And they pit on the last one, the Carter 5 is worth listening to. I have a problem with that because it's not true. The Carter 5 we should have got is what is probably worth listening to. This shit was not, it was here and gone and forgot about that fast. And it's a disappointment because you can hear the dated music of the year it was supposed to come out. Now, if you take some of the tracks and you take the entire body of work and cut it down to about a good 
14 records at least and it dropped then definitely fire classic you know what i'm saying they don't even got the carter four on here so that's what i'm saying the carter five is worth listening to but people were sick of waiting by carter four so when these people write these articles it just be funny to me but anyway that's just some shit i had to say you know what i mean i'm gonna throw the little uh thread in the end of the video but that shit was hilarious to just see that shit like wait what these people skipping albums that they have no idea wow you just can't skip a wayne album in my opinion but i mean it's up for debate y'all sound off in the comments thanks for listening hope y'all being safe out there i don't have to tell you to wash your hands because that's common sense but everybody be safe out there one